Hello and welcome into another disability video. Today I'm going to be talking about anxiety and overstimulation. As someone with a vision impairment, overstimulation is a huge deal. People with autism, people who have a hearing impairment or who are visually impaired often get overstimulized a lot in stressful and cluttered environments, especially things like restaurants or concerts because it's just too noisy and there's too much happening. This was something I used to do as a child all of the time, would be to throw a tantrum or to stick my hands over my ears, close my eyes, and so whether you draw in or out is dependent on your environment and how your body deals with all of that. But when it comes to overstimulation, like I said, there are two different ways. You either lash out and it comes out of you or you close yourself in. And I was someone who kind of did both because as a child, I would do what I just showed you, but I would also scream. I just have to put it out there right now. But if you have a child who is dealing with this, do not yell at them. Do not grab them. Please just take some deep breaths, take them outside, give them a hug, tell them to take deep breaths and to just relax and try to get them to explain how they're feeling. I know it's very hard with children, but just try because often all they're feeling is just overwhelmed from that environment. As a child, I also used to have a fear of death and darkness because of the umbilical cord nearly killing me as a baby so as a child it was something that seriously affected me i had to go to therapy for it having the bathroom light on with my door slightly shut so there's a bit of light coming in this helps and makes me feel better i also try to avoid scary movies and that way i'm not afraid or having bad dreams and yeah, I just used to struggle so much with that kind of stuff and still do. So I also used to have seizures. I only ever had three that stopped when I was about 13, but those also would affect those feelings. And I would also, even as I got a bit older and started to develop anxiety, would have what I like to call blackouts. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but it's where I would be in an environment where I was just so in my head, I was so stressed out, so overwhelmed that my brain would literally shut down and I could not see anything and I could not hear anything. Whenever I would have panic attacks, that's when like my vision would get blurry and eventually there'd be like a ringing in my ears. And then if I was really shutting down, I couldn't see and I couldn't hear and it was really scary. As someone who is an introvert, I don't like really busy, overwhelming places and I like to be quite quiet. So as a child, I would also develop something to help me with those stressful environments that I call skipping. And it is not what you might think it is. It is where I would pace up and down and create a fictional world inside my head. That is what I use to create stories now. I would often create TV shows in my head and just kind of escape and use my imagination to create something better when I was being bullied or stressed out by school and by the environment around me. I did not like the feeling of kind of being bullied by teachers. Now they didn't actually bully me, but they would have meetings with my parents where they basically forbidden me from doing that thing at school and I had to do it at home. Luckily my parents had a really long hallway which meant that I could just use that when I got home from school and I just ended up having half days when I got to high school because I just couldn't deal with the long days and the hard work as someone whose brain just didn't function the way that other people's did because of the brain damage at birth. So I now even to this day still skip Sometimes in bed before I go to sleep, I will do it without moving my body and I will still do that walking up and down in my own hallway at my own house. Sometimes even when I'm walking my dog, I've developed a kind of half consciousness 
where I'm a bit in autopilot and I'm able to do two things at once. I'm able to see the world around me while also being in my head. I have to be really careful when I'm crossing roads and things so I don't do it then but I do do it when I'm like walking my dog and you know I just want to have a bit of time to myself. Some of the things I do to help me in these sort of environments is again if I'm rocking back and forth people know to get me out of there to make sure that I'm somewhere where I can be a bit more quiet as someone who is an introvert. I don't want to be somewhere too noisy and too busy. I want to be somewhere that is relatively quiet. So if I am going to a restaurant, I want to make sure that I'm in a quiet booth somewhere where there's not a lot of other noises around and I can just focus on the people that I'm with. Or if I am in an environment where I can't really help it, I'm walking down the street, I will again just go into my fictional world that I created as a way to help. Another thing that I do is to watch things like Disney Channel where they have the laugh track and it's all fun and happy and sweet and wholesome rather than something really scary or something a bit more intense. It's just my way of coping with my overstimulation. Stopping what I'm doing, taking deep breaths, going outside. If I am stressing out about something, I just leave the room or leave what I'm doing and go for a walk or take some deep breaths and go and do something else. Maybe watch some TV just for a bit to kind of calm down. If I am in a restaurant, just going outside to get some fresh air and take some deep breaths. I've found this to really help me. But for those of you also dealing with overstimulation and anxiety, what are some techniques you do to help you in those stressful or overwhelming environments? I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe and ring that bell. That way you don't miss when I upload a new video and I will see you in the next one.